Welcome to the newly rebranded Taking Hacks with Sindelar. I'm your host, Alex Sindelar. Welcome to Taking Hacks with Alex Sindelar. I'm Alex Sindelar. Joining me today is big business David Vilches, the catcher for the Creighton Blue Jays, and center fielder Will, hand fan club, hand a fan. Guys, how you doing? Fire, feeling great. Doing great, doing great. How are you? Oh, doing just fine. Trying to exist in this this uh, this world we got going on here. Oh, I feel um, that. So let's just start it off. I mean, you guys were there in Corvallis. You guys come back. You play what four series, and then season's over. What was that process like? What 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 was going through your heads when all of a sudden you hear season's canceled, series is canceled, everything this year is done? David, go ahead. Um. We really didn't know, like we didn't have a fast start. Uh, we were, the, we ended the season five and 10. And um, we are just, like I was devastated to have everything we worked up for the fall. Nobody likes the fall, it's not fun. You know, everything's just for the spring. And to have it just ripped away from you just like that. Like it was, it was tough, it hurt. Yeah, I thought it was extremely frustrating. Uh, I think, like, of our 10 games that we lost, we probably lost six or seven of them by one run. So it kind of always felt like the whole time that we were about to figure it out and about to have a really good team. Uh, so just to kind of have it cut short like that was pretty disheartening, I guess. Uh, David, um, I mean, you were, you were kind of the heart and soul of the team in 2019. Um, just, I mean, the way that you, you worked behind the plate – um, working with, with Coach Gandasi and working with the guys here after going, um, you know, the JUCO route and then, you know, coming here, what did you pick up? What did you learn, you know, technically and to make you a better catcher, better at your position? Uh, so I went to JUCO, right, right out, of, right out of high school. And I was actually a third baseman. Mm. And um, our starting catcher broke his hand and they really didn't have nobody else to go back there. They're like, all right. We can never throw the fastest to second. They, you know, you got the job. I was like, all right, well, I got to get in the game somehow, right? I got to swing the bat and do something. So I was like, all right, yeah, I'm your man. And then I come up here as a catcher and, and you know, taking the the job that was given to me from Emoti. You know, like, he has big shoes. And um, I couldn't I couldn't have done it without, like, Coach G and Coach Service pushed me, but especially, like, my teammates. Garrett, we were the same age class. Uh, and we just, like – compete against each other and made us both better as a, as a whole unit back there. And then Will, I mean, you look at center field and the guys who came before you, um, you had Clark Brinkman who got drafted, you had Danny Woodrow who got drafted. I mean, you go all the way back to Mike Gerber who, I mean, he, he's been in the show. Um, what's it like been playing center field at TD in the big East and for Creighton? Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up in Omaha, kids, so I grew up watching all those guys. I was always a big Creighton baseball fan. So I was kind of always falling in and stuff, and I knew their center fielder was good every single year. It didn't matter. Uh, then I went to JUCO my freshman year. I uh, didn't really have much going for me. There was some schools coming the next fall, uh, but no one was really offering me or anything after one year. Uh, and so I wasn't really prepared to leave. I was kind of had my mindset on going back to junior college. Uh, then Creighton brought me out on an offer or on a, a visit. And the second they brought me out to center field at TD Ameritrade, that's, that was the second they had me. It was, it's just such a surreal feeling being out there, you know, where the best players play every single year, where you go to games growing up and stuff like that. So just really being center field at TD Ameritrade is something I kind of take a lot of pride in and I enjoy the heck out of. All right, Will, I, I can right. ask you about hitting the home run against – Tommy Henry in Corvallis. Yeah, my only claim to fame. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you just poked over left field. I mean, what, what was – I mean, because that's your only home run in your college career. So yeah, far, one blown. In Juco, but that's all you got so far. Yeah. What, what was the feeling like? I mean, how, how cool was that, just being in a regional and a do-or-die game and then hitting one out? Uh, it was awesome. Uh, I started out the – Regional, I think, like, one for seven or something. I was 0-4 against Oregon State. I think one for three against Michigan in the first game. And then I think I started 0-2 against Cincinnati, too. 
Uh, and then I remember finding a barrel. I had like a two RBI hit. Uh, and I started feeling kind of a, a little bit better going into that Michigan game. Uh, then I remember for that first at bat, I literally said like, for some reason, I just told myself I'm going to load as early as I can here. And he just happened to throw a fastball inside that I yanked, went about four feet over the wall, wind baited a little bit, but I'll take it. <laughs> Bill, just what was it like seeing that go out? Oh, it was the happiest kid you could ever imagine. I had the, a smile from here to here. <laughs> he he big league you know, going around the bases, but the moment he stepped home, it was just all the emotions came out. He was jumping up and down. Like we were we were high. I now I asked I asked Gandasi and I asked uh Word Kemper about that game against Michigan. I mean, just all the emotions that went through it, David. I mean, have you been part of a baseball game like that? Just the rally and just the the, no. the constant like no. ebb and flow. I mean, have you ever but seen it's, like that it's untouched. Like mm-hmm. that feeling, that game, you can never get that back. Like that's just in its own little world. Out there. It is, yeah. And that'll probably always be my favorite baseball memory is that game, one of them yeah. at least. I used to have to guess like early in school, everybody's asking what's your favorite memory of all that. And it's like, right, yeah, that's it. It's an automatic. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, take care of the rest of the year. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one. Thanks for having us on.